Hey guys, welcome to Between the Apexes with Dr. Speed Lemon and Hog Dust, where we discuss all things motorcycle. On this episode, it'll be a special focus on the season opener of MotoGP. So, Dustin, Hog. Hog who, Dust is ready. <laughs> 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 who do you think is going to be our race winner at the season opener at Portimao? The race winner? Oh man, uh, let's see. It's gonna be somebody on a Ducati, just because you gotta go off, go off of last year's data, and uh, I'm kind of annoyed to say it, but I'll just go with Peko. <laughs> Peko, last year's champion. Yeah. See, I'm feeling Miguel Oliveira is gonna be our our dark horse in this race. He's on the Aprilia. Aprilia was looking good with Alicia Aspargo on it, and it is his home track, which gives you that special uh, yeah. special support. Except he's on a new bike. He is on a new bike. So he has to relearn a whole new riding style, to different feel, you know. Yeah. I, I don't see him getting in the top five. He was doing okay in practice. He was always staying about mid-pack and yep. top ten. Yeah, but race pace is different because you get heat in the tires and longevity and, you know, there's just more mechanics to it. So mm-hmm. you got to have a level of understanding of your machine. Sure. And he just doesn't have that yet, but he will be more in the top tier guys later in the season, I believe. All right, all right. And uh, what about everyone's favorite, Mark Marquez? I think uh, Mark's gonna. He could be a top six guy. Um, he's not gonna be beating anyone. Uh, the Honda just doesn't have the front end abilities yet. Uh, for s- somehow from. You know, what people say and other writers, I listen to everybody, the way that Ducati can stop is where it's getting its advantage and then coming out of the corners. So it has the power. Right now, Honda can't close that gap. So I just don't see Marquez fighting at the front. Do you think um, his teammate Mir will bring anything to the table to Honda? Maybe something from over at Suzuki? Um. I think Mir's going to be good in about 10 races. <laughs> about 10 races? <laughs> All right. It's just going to take a while because you're going from an inline four chassis that's very smooth and fluid. Um, he's got the natural ability to pick up those things, but um, it's just going to be a, such a change. And you're looking at the top 10 guys are within you know fractions of a second of each other. Yeah, I can see Mir spending a lot of times in the gravel traps just because he's got a lot to prove. He's young. He's on the Repsol Honda team. Yeah. Which is putting guys in the gravel traps, unfortunately. Yeah, it's the front end. But I think uh, round four, we're going to see a different different Marquez. Okay. And the reason why is they're going to start enforcing the tire pressure on the front end. Oh, really? Yep. I haven't heard about that. And there was always a gentleman's agreement before. Is yeah. Now they're going to... Yeah. Okay. So it, all the manufacturers have to agree. But I can tell you right now, Yamaha and Aprilia and everyone's going to want it because last year, you know, those Ducati guys were getting caught with their pants down yeah. with low tire pressure on the front. You know what, though? I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like it's prototype racing. I feel like anything should go as far as tire pressure. I mean, if you, your and wheels fall off, that's kind of on you. But Well, that's I agree. You know, run at your own risk. But when Michelin puts something on the track, they have to abide by certain regulations. Otherwise, Michelin's at fault. And then if you put that liability out of Michelin, and Michelin's going to be like, well, they are running lower tire pressure, you know? Yeah. That's the name of the game, man. Lawsuits <laughs> are nuts, man. <laughs> yeah. All right. I can see that angle, too. So I, I could tell you right now, I mean, Cal Crutchfield even said it. He'd look at Marquez's data on his front tire and be like, I don't know how he's doing this. (laughs) So if you start eliminating that advantage that people are running low tire pressure, I think Marquez closes the gap on round four. And I don't think it has anything to do with the chassis or anything. I think it's just the front tire. All right. That's an interesting perspective. Yep. And Alex Renz, how do you think he's going to do on the the Honda? I feel bad for the guy. He's, uh, He's the last generation of smoothness, like, like Jorge Lorenzo. Yeah, he is um, a, he's a very Jorge Lorenzo-esque rider. And he rides the front end a lot, and Honda is the worst on that riding style. And um, I hope he can do something with it. Maybe that weight that he transfers onto the front might help the Honda, but probability is pretty low because nobody else in the V4 rides that way. 
that's true. I could see him doing well on a on a Yamaha, but you know yeah. that seat's gonna have to get vacated. I hate to say it, but I would rather see Alex Renz on the Yamaha instead of Frankie. I think Frankie's just he's lost his touch. I, I agree. I, I love yeah. Frankie's personality. I think he's a great person, great character, chill chill guy, but. He's not showing results. Yep. Yeah, and you, you have to be a MotoGP. You have to be a level to even mm-hmm. compete. And um, I, I really like the guy. He can help these younger guys get into that level because he's got the pace and he can be basically like work with that Cal Crutchel with the uh, Yamaha and you know develop bikes. But I don't know if he's got that pace anymore to really fight. You know, speaking of Cal, I, th- I thought he did really well in his few appearances on the on the satellite Yamaha, considering yeah. he hasn't been in it. You know, he was finishing, what, top eight? Yeah. Yeah, he did really well. I mean, he's just, uh, you know, he's – some people have a gift, right? Sure. These, these people have a talent, and they're there for that reason. Yeah, and I think I like about Crutchlow is, unlike the other guys, he doesn't come from that same pedigree of, of Moto3, Moto2. He's a super bike yeah yep background him and Petruzzi were the last ones <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so I mean I, he does bring something interesting and it shows you know what a guy who was on a Honda for a long time can do on a Yamaha yeah so yeah he probably gets on the Yamaha and is like man this bike's easy to ride <laughs> <laughs> I could go much faster <laughs> for sure for sure um okay what about uh Let's see, I'm kind of spacing out there. The uh, Maverick. What do you think of Ma- Maverick's going to do out of Prilia? You think he's going to show I, us anything new? I feel like I feel like Maverick should be the fastest guy on the ape. Like, he mm-hmm. should be. I, I hate saying this all the time. And I watch his writing style, and I'm like, dude, this guy is amazing. He just doesn't have consistency. I, I mean, I hate to say it, but I feel like he struggles mentally. Yeah, yeah, I think I agree there. I think that uh, if at the moment there's a weird something that he doesn't like, it just implodes his mind. Yeah, it's like in that movie, um, The Replacements with Keanu Reeves. Yeah, he just gets in that quicksand and yeah. he can't get out. Yeah, I feel like I feel like riding style wise, Maverick is one of the fastest guys out there. For oh, sure. for sure. I mean, he's king of king of testing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and. If he can somehow be consistent, he can be a MotoGP champion. He's got the ability. And he's got the bike now to do it. Yeah. So, and the Aprilia is looking strong. Yeah. I would say the Aprilia is much stronger than Yamaha at the moment. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think anyone would disagree there. What about uh, everybody's favorite, my, my personal, the class clown, Jack Miller on the KTM? You think he's going to? Oh, man. I'm cheering for that guy. Yeah. Like this season, I'm all about Jack Miller and Luca Marini. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Luca Marini definitely has a leg up on the Ducati. I mean, yeah. he's. I love Jack Miller. Um, I could tell you what, out of all the teams, and not just because I'm wearing the hat, but if I were to go party with any of those dudes, I'm going to be with the KTM crew, like straight up, because like, uh-huh. I feel like they're going to know how to party. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of like that energy and the flow of those guys. Uh, Uh, Hanging out with Brad Bender and and, and Jack Miller. That's where the party's at, guys. (laughs) I mean, if I'm going to be in anybody's trailer in the paddock. Hell yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I think think between those, between all the guys, I think that's the fun team for sure. Um, Miller's going to be, he's a fighter. So I can say, but with the KTM team, Brad Bender and Jack Miller have no fear. They're okay. those they're team fearless. They're team fearless. Those are the two guys that are the most of fighter style. That's what I say. Like those are the gladiators on the bikes. I feel like if there's a lot of weight wet races, yeah, we're gonna see those guys at the, the pointy end yeah. of the stick. Yeah, they'll go full send for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing holding those guys back. No, but I just I don't see them right now getting in a position where they can fight for podiums. Would you say as opposed to um Alex Renz, who's a front end rider, I feel like those guys are more. They ride the rear wheel. They're they're rear wheel riders, drifters, yeah, so, if you will. Yeah, the the fighting style riding is more body positioning, 
and more aggressive on the throttle, things like that. And uh, so that's more of a different style than Renz. Uh, mm-hmm. Renz is very slow and smooth. He doesn't fight. He's He flows like water, you know. Um, it's completely different styles. Uh, I don't I don't think that Yam- the Honda bike is going to be any beneficial for that. So yeah. <laughs> I, I can say I think that Jack Miller is going to do better than Alex Renz. You think so? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I I I feel like if Renz can stay consistent mm-hmm. and not and stay out of the gravel, maybe he'll be in front. I mean, they're on similar machineries. I feel like KTM and Honda. Yeah, they're very similar with each other. But um, Renz definitely doesn't have the riding style to suit those machineries. Yeah, and I think Jack Miller does, and. I think that Brad Bender is obviously great. They're both actually really close because if you look at the the data, uh, uh, Brad Bender's obviously been with KTM for a while, so he has a good understanding of the bikes. Jack Miller's already right there with him. Oh, they're neck and neck with each other. Okay, so it shows that Miller's already getting the understanding and the ability to maximize the KTM. If you look at the Hondas, they're still a mess. They're everywhere. Marquez is way ahead. You got gaps everywhere. Do you think Pole's going to help at all with the de- development of the KTM? Oh, for sure. Pole Spargo is, he's a fighter riding style as well. Yeah. Him and Marquez, like that fighting style. Very physical riders. Very physical riders. They move, they jerk a lot. You know, it's a hard fight when they when they ride. Um, so that's the riding style that Honda needs, that Alex needs to be. And that's that's strange that they have all three physical riders. I guess they're seeing it as well, you know. They oh, have, yeah, they know. Yeah, they have Brad Bender. Who's the other KTM rider? Um, it's the Augusto Fernandez. Yeah, so. I'm not too familiar with, with him. He's one of the, the new rookies, right? Yeah, yeah, He's a. it's going to be his first year, so he's going to be under the radar. He's just going to be in a situation where he's just learning MotoGP. Okay. I don't really expect much out of him uh, just because you need to have – a couple of years in MotoGP to be real competitive. The only person that was competitive out of the gate recently was one of the greatest riders in the world, Fabio. Okay, yeah, Fabio. Marquez also did well in his 2013 yeah. debut. He won the And the Inea Bastianini. So, Inea. I feel yeah. like Inea is going to give Peko some troubles. I think he's going to it's going to disrupt the the yeah. the order of things in the Ducati garage. I personally think so there's two levels of rider you got guys that can put down fast laps, and you got guys that can put down fast laps late in the race. Right. Anea is definitely the latter on that one. Anea is the alien. Uh, in the, on, on used tires, yeah. Anea is yeah. second to none. Anea, I think, is the best MotoGP rider right now. On the best bike. On, on the, the best, best bike. team. Yeah. If so. he can be consistent, I don't think Pecco stands a chance against him. Okay. You know, Anaya might be a waste runner, too, at port Mel. Yeah, I mean, that's just a weird track, though. It's, like, it's really hard to call. Um, and the reason why I put Pecco ahead is because this is Pecco's old bike. So okay. he's going to be a little bit more familiar with it. Anaya's bike was a few years older. All so right. he's jumping up. Uh, he makes it makes a good point there. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I just give it to Pecco. I mean, Pecco's great. Um, I, I just kind of bored with him. Like, he's just a... <laughs> He's just like a an energy that I just don't click with, really? even though he's fantastic. I, I I like him. I feel like they made him seem kind of white whiny in the MotoGP uh, that ep that series they did last year. But yeah. I feel like uh, I like his his low key demeanor. Yeah, but nobody <laughs> says anything more cool than I push like a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> So on the Ducati team, I think Anea is the coolest guy, and then okay, and then yeah. ultimately uh, uh, Luca is always going to be in a special spot because Valentino Rossi, no matter what, is the greatest of, of all time. time. Yeah, I think we yeah. both agree. I think most of the world can agree on that. Yeah, um, he sh- he very well should have had eleven titles, in my in my opinion. Yeah, but you know, ifs ifs and buts, right? Yeah. <laughs> Wish I coulda, woulda. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And this year in MotoGP marks a new era of MotoGP. For the first time ever, we're going to feature sprint racing. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I feel like 
it's more racing, which is fine with me. <laughs> See, I, I don't like it. I don't like yeah. the sprint racing. I feel like um, it's going to take away from the main event. I don't like that they stand for half points mm -hmm. towards the title and the championship. I feel like the main it should all be about that. If they were going to do it, I would like to see them do it in place of qualifying, yeah. where sprint racing determines grid positions mm -hmm. but doesn't count for points. Um, I feel like it puts the riders at greater risk. They're going to be pushing harder for more laps, and it, which could also ultimately affect the championship. I feel like it's weird because most likely whoever is going to be fast in the sprint race is going to be fast in the other race as well. Okay. You know, so it's kind of like you're doing the same thing twice. Because isn't it still like 12 laps or something like that? I yeah, it's like half distance. I think it's 10 or 12 laps. Yeah. But, you know, like I feel like a lot of riders will be disadvantaged. Like we were talking about Anea coming on strong later in the races. Yeah. He's not going to be a sprint race shiner, whereas – Jorge Martin is probably going to dominate the sprint races because he can put out the fast laps right away. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very valid point. Um, Maverick, I think Maverick's also going to struggle in the sprint races because it, it usually takes Maverick four or five laps just to get his head out of his ass, just to get yeah, right. focused. Uh, Maverick is going to crush it. <laughs> you think so? On yeah, because he doesn't have to ride on a full tank. If, if that was his issue, if that was his issue, someone beats him to turn one and, oh, my God, the whole world's over, you know? Give Maverick half a <laughs> tank of fuel and he's insane. <laughs> <laughs> and how are they going to decide grid positions for the sprint races? Are they going to do that based off of practice lap times? I still think it's qualifying, Q1, Q2. They're still going to have Q1 yeah. and Q2? Okay. Yeah. All right. About that. Uh, the only downside with sprint races is it, it changes your tire allocation throughout the season. It does. Uh -huh. So that's a big deal. And then the riders have less time to set up for the main event, and they already yep. had less time to set up for yep. the main event with the way they do FP1, 2, and 3. Yep. Yeah, I think uh, it's an interesting dynamic. Um, I'm not sure why they're introducing it because I've always loved MotoGP the way it was. Mm -hmm. uh, it does spread out in case somebody wrecks on Sunday. You know, so it gives somebody the chance to still get points. So I kind of see the advantage there. Okay. But it's like, you know, I, I know World Superbike has it, but I never got excited about it, you know? Yeah. And then I feel like they race too much. Like, there is there is too much racing on a weekend. <laughs> it's called World Superbike. Because <laughs> um, then it's like, you know, it's like, well, which race is this? And, you know, whatever. You, sometimes, like, if you're not like us, we're going to know it because we watch it all the time. But people that are just getting into MotoGP or yeah, it just tune in. Yeah, it's going to be like, well, what's this race? And why are we doing this race? And like, well, why are the points different? You know, there's a lot of explanation that has to happen where it's easy to explain one race. You know? Right. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, it's interesting that they don't have a writer's union to kind of. Yeah. Well, that's what Dorna's supposed to be, right? Like, they're supposed to be out there for the riders and the teams and managing all this, but... Yeah, I feel like Dorna says, hey, guys, what do you want to do? All right, we're going to do this. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I don't think any of the riders were in favor of racing two races throughout the weekends. Yeah. I don't think I, I, don't think I heard one guy say, yeah, I'm excited about this. It, it, it's going to be an interesting dynamic for sure, especially yeah. if someone gets hurt going all out in a sprint race. Where does that leave them in the championship? Or yeah. are they going to sandbag in sprint races so they can go all out in the in the main event? Yeah, because if you're going to have to allocate your tires throughout the season, your engines, you know, there's a lot of things that are on the line. Or just allocate your physical abilities, you know, yeah. just save a little energy for the other race. The, the yeah. more the race with more points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, the strategy is going to be different for sure. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to have a formulated opinion yet because we just haven't seen how it works out. I think once a few more races go, like maybe the third or four races in, we'll start to have a better understanding. Uh, but, yeah, it's – I don't know why Dorna thinks they're going to make more money doing this. Mm -hmm. It's always about money, obviously. Maybe Bottom sponsorships line. have to pay during races. So if they make two races, I don't know how these work, you know. Sure. Dorna's like, oh, we could double charge him every weekend because it's a race. <laughs> Think about it. Then maybe that's why. Who knows? 
Yeah, I not a fan, but maybe you know, change has always been scary and unknown. So maybe as the season progresses, I'll I'll, get, I'll grow to like it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and just let's just go with it and see what happens. And I mean, that's that's what it's going to be. So we'll just mm-hmm. see what it is. But yeah, there's definitely advantages to guys that are just fast out of the gate for sure. It's it's like when they got rid of um, when they got rid of Dylan and put Simon Crayfar in there. Yeah, I hated it. But yeah. now I love Simon. Yeah, I feel like he's a he adds a great perspective being a former writer oh, on yeah. the show. He's the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he gets so in there. Good. He notices all the little technical changes that yep. most of us would never would never ask about. Yeah, no, that's his knowledge is so valuable. Um, and I like his accent and the, his <laughs> delivery and his thought process is like the best. So, uh huh. The way the way he interjects himself is just so thoughtful compared yeah. to like. You know, Steve Day, who just kind of throws himself in there. And he's always been biased with Suzuki, and now they're gone, so I feel bad for him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and hopefully we'll see more of um, Amy Reynolds in there, too. I know she was yeah. kind of largely missing last year because of the new baby coming yeah. out. Got married, had the kid, and all that stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. We'll see. The show is changing, and it's evolving. Mm-hmm. I think that's good for the sport, but I feel like uh, there's going to be some learning experiences on the way. Mm-hmm. Yep. If you had to ride one bike of one of any of the manufacturers, if you had to ride one of them, which one would you pick? You know, I feel bad turning my back on Honda. I've always ridden Honda sport bikes, um, mm-hmm. but just seeing – how Honda's treating their riders as far as, you know, high siding them in the turns. I don't know if I'd want to ride the, the Honda <laughs> Moto GP. I think I'd want to ride the best bike on the grid, which is obviously the one with eight bikes on the grid, yep. which would be the Ducati. Um, just to say, hey, I've ridden the best bike in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean. What do you think? I don't know. I've only known the feeling of inline fours, so I'd probably go ride the Yamaha. Okay. Because I feel like I, that would suit me the best. All right. And it seems like the easiest bike to ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I feel like the Yamaha, the M1, would be an interesting experience as yeah. well. Just fast in the corners. I mean, all the bikes are so fast compared to our to our level of understanding that there's no way we're gonna feel the little nuances of, of each and every one of them. Yeah. It would be like our mind would just like explode, be like, oh, my God, the abilities or whatever. You know, it's like, <laughs> holy cow. Right. Like, I could be on a detuned Yamaha and still think it's the most craziest thing in the world. <laughs> uh, for sure. For sure. Even even on street tires, I mean, it'd blow my mind away. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I think i will just roll with the Yamaha, but I would want to party with the Jack Miller and <laughs> – and the KTM guys, because I feel like they'd be the most fun to play with. So, <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Um, all right, that's interesting you bring that up. Out of all MotoGP riders, past and present, who do you think you'd want to have a beer with? Oh, Valentino Rossi. All right, all right. Well, I you can't – you got to exclude the doctor. You got to exclude the doctor? Yeah. Um, past or present? He'll just be there, but out yeah, of all the as other long as, <laughs> as long as Rossi's there – good um i feel like somebody that um that i would love to meet and they didn't get the shine as much as they should have shined um i would i would love to talk to casey stoner really yeah i think i think he's he never got to do what he was intended to do because of things that interfered with his life but i feel like He's the most gifted writer of all time. I don't know. Ever since his, your talent outweighs your ambition, or your ambition outweighs your talent comment, I don't know if I'd want to ride with Casey. No, he had medical reasons why he had to stop. Yeah. But I think, like, talent-wise, so Valentino Rossi is my favorite writer, and Valentino Rossi, if you ask him the question, who the best writer ever was, he's going to say Casey Stoner. So that's why I say it. Oh, Okay. I would say out of all the all the past writers, Valentino Rossi with Colin Edwards. Yeah. I'd like to have a beer with Colin Edwards. He's from yeah. Texas. I'm from Texas. Yeah. I feel like he'd have a 
he'd know how to knock him back and he'd know how to tell some <laughs> stories. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Um, so here we are at the beginning of the season. I know this is a, a hard question to, to fathom since we don't have any data in front of us, but championship winner for 2023 who do you think is going to be the title the title holder at the end of the year at the end of the year number one guy number one guy i'm gonna say anaya bastianini i think that's a safe bet um yeah it, it's hard to argue with you there uh it's on the best bike he's a good rider I think Peko or Fabio is the only two that are going to give him a run for it, so it's hard to call. But if you're going to call Inea, I'm going to call Peko. I'm going okay. to go with last year's champion. I think he's going to run the number one plate, and I think he's going to be the first to break the number one curse. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think uh, I think Marquez is going to close the gap, though. You think so? Yeah. I think he'll, he'll always be near the front, but at 30 years old, I think he, his time to shine is... Yeah. It's uh, setting. Does Marquez leave Honda next year? Does he leave Honda? Does he terminate his contract early in search of a better bike? I mean, just to terminate that five-year contract early, mm -hmm. that's going to cost him $12 million. Is another factory willing to pay that $12 million? Possibly. Um, who would take him, though? Aprilia. I think that's his only, I think that's his only option. Yep. Because any other any other bike would be a lateral movement. I yeah. feel like it's not going to be any better, um, and I don't think there's any room in Ducati for him. I think if a if they can get him, if the Prelia can get Mark Marquez, it'll be huge for them. Oh. I think uh, that's going to put Aprilia in championship in the next seasons. And who would they have to get rid of? Um, I don't know if Raul Fernandez is going to be good. Well, Raul Fernandez is on a satellite team. I don't see Mark Marquez going to a satellite team. It's going well, to be one of the factory riders. Well, Leish is probably going to retire after this season. Okay. But I think – and I can't count Leish out because it's a probably, and Aprilia would never get rid of him. But I feel like they would do a factory bike on a satellite team for Mark. Yeah, I could see that yeah. with factory support. Yep. Similar to Rossi's first year with Honda. Yep. Yep. Well, it's an interesting, uh, interesting thought process. Yeah, I think if Marquez was on an Aprilia, he would be the champion. Yeah, it's just the Honda, the Honda, the Yamaha, and I guess KTM as well. They're just, yeah, their factories aren't putting their best foot forward. The money's yeah. there, just the bike's not. Well, all the engineering goes. So if you look at all the what's recently been going on it's it's mostly aerodynamics and power and putting the power down stopping all that stuff but um i think everything's going to change in 2025 why is that because michelin is set to release a new front tire different okay. compound everything and you that resets everything you think they're going to continue with aero or do you think they're going to ban aero in 2025 they're probably going to start limiting it and doing what f1 does with drs Okay. Um, I'm not familiar with F1, so what do they what do they do there? It's called drag reduction systems, okay. and what they're going to do is technically the bikes do it when the rear end starts to squat, it creates less load of downforce on the front, and that gives them faster top end speed, and that's somewhat considered DRS on a motorcycle. So what they'll do is they'll limit riders that can do the ride height on certain straightaways um, to make it more competitive. So that's probably something that we'll see in that time frame, 2025. Um, so that's going to be a big reset for a lot of riders. And then that, the, the new tire, the new compound that's coming out with Michelin, I think you're going to stop seeing Ducati just rain over everybody. But it's going to be a Ducati show for the next couple of years. Yeah, I could see that. And then in 2027, they're talking about getting rid of the ride height devices too. Yeah, they should. So, yeah, yeah it's just... It's nothing that's ever going to translate to a street bike. So, yeah, I, I feel like they should just get rid of all that stuff because it's just motorcycle racing is about rider skill. And it is. It's an art. If you want the best of everything, you go to F1. Uh -huh. If you want to have somebody that is artistic and naturally gifted and 
have a level of understanding, it's all those nannies everywhere is destroying that, I feel like. Uh, I believe so, too. And you see it now with the Ducati. The Ducati lifts up so many riders just because mm-hmm. it's it, the bike is riding itself. Yeah. Yeah, Alex Marquez is already faster than all the Honda riders, and it's his first <laughs> time riding one. I mean, that, that's a clear you know, indicator. I'm, gl- I'm glad you brought up Alex Marquez. I think that there's there's more going on with, with Alex Marquez than just switching bikes. I mean, obviously, he's going to superior bike, mm-hmm. but he's also stepping out of the, the shadow of his big brother. Yeah. Which I feel like I feel like that's gonna that does a lot just for him mentally. Yeah, um, Alex is he's uh, he's not the same riding style as Mark, so I hate to be that guy, but Mark's still a better rider than sure. Alex. But I just they have different body types. I mean, yeah. Well, then I look at like Luca Marini and Alex Marquez, like they're similar. And I feel like Luca's got a better understanding of feeling. Like he's got that. There's something in the head that clicks when you have a natural feeling subconsciously when you're riding fast. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Luca's got that. And that's where Anaya shines. Anaya's level of that is much higher than anyone else. Luca's big too. He's was he's the he's, biggest guy. Was he like five eleven? He's six foot and 153 pounds. Yeah, so he's, he's the biggest guy on the grid. He's definitely having to to compensate for yeah. a lot, for a lot. Yeah. He knows it, but he's fine with that. So, yeah, I mean, he's still, he's got the, he's got the natural gift. He, he's got the pedigree. Yeah, <laughs> Apple doesn't fall far, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anything else we want to talk about for the season opener? No, I mean, I'm excited. So it's going to be a weird year. There's a lot of adjustments, a lot of changes. Expectations are high for everybody. Um, But I think Ducati is just going to, you know, lay it down for the first few races. And if they enforce that front tire air pressure sensor thing that they're kicking on in round four, um, that's when I start seeing Marquez come back. So that's what I'm guessing. All right. Well, I think uh, Ducati is at an advantage just because they have eight bikes on the grid and the most data. Yeah. uh, Next year, they want to get rid of them, though. Really? Yeah, they want to get... Um, well, the VR46 team might go to Yamaha, right? Yeah, they're talking about it. Um, and I feel like VR46 might potentially get the factory, the factory seat with Yamaha. Um, maybe a monster would be a satellite team. I don't know. But we'll yeah, see. I mean, it's a, it's a hell of a sacrifice to give up the Ducati. So hopefully Yamaha brings something to the table that, that makes that worthwhile. Yeah, so Yamaha's on a huge knife right now. Yamaha itself... And Frankie's on the, you know, there's just so much pressure in Yamaha right now. Um, and it's it's really uh, unfortunate for them because they're just not going to be able to compete. Um, and Fabio's one of the best riders out there. and no, he's, he's getting everything out of that bike. Yeah, and I don't, like if I were to tell you like the best riders in the world right now, you know, Fabio's in the top three. Mm-hmm. So, and unfortunately, he's not going to be a top three at the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, that, that speed deficit's just too hard to overcome. Yeah. It'd, be, it'd be interesting to see what Fabio can do on another bike. Yeah, I mean, if if you put everybody on a Ducati, <laughs> on the same Ducati. Well, then we're at BSB, where everybody's kind of on the same machinery. Yeah. Yeah, I think, the, I think Fabio's two. <laughs> so, but it is what it is, right? That's racing is racing. <laughs> That's racing, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey if you're not rubbing you're not racing exactly <laughs> all right guys we'll we'll, con- we'll wrap this up and then uh at the end of the this this re- this race weekend we'll recap and see where we are on predictions and where we think the teams will go from there bye Adios. <laughs>